Okay, here's a simple fact. Every day we are one day closer to the restart of cruising in the United States. Uh, another simple fact, the major cruise lines have not canceled their 2021 Alaska cruises. Yet everywhere you go online, you run into this huge black cloud of pessimism, of people saying that there's no cruises in 2021, of people saying that Alaska's definitely canceled, all for the sake of keeping it real. Well, facts are facts. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cruise News Show. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Well, look, I'm going to do what I do. I got some positive stories for you. And, and I've got, I've, I got, I might rant a little bit if you will give me the space to do that. But first, let me tell you about the biggest story that is tweaking my brain today. The biggest story to me, which is a positive cruise news story. The biggest indicator as to when cruising will return in the United States. In my opinion, the biggest signal is how the country is doing with the virus. And to be honest, the number is moving in the right direction. Let me show you this chart. This is what you get when you Google COVID data. This is a compilation of CDC data, John Hopkins data. But dig this. This is the chart from the last 30 days. If you go to the first day of the chart, 252,000 new cases reported on January the 9th. And if you look at the numbers from yesterday, that number is down to 87,000 cases. That is still a lot of cases, but for the first time in the last 30 days, that is under 100,000 cases per day. And that is a drastic decrease from 30 days ago. This is exciting news. Under 100,000 cases in the U.S. for the first time in 30 days. Hopefully that trend continues. There's a lot of concern out there. What about the variants? Will the variants make the number go up? What about the recent social gatherings? The Super Bowl, will that make the number go up? Well, it might, but what we know today, what the is is, is that it is drastically different than it was 30 days ago. All we can do is continue to do what we can do and hopefully drive those numbers down. Now, and I do want to rant a little bit. I, I was looking at fatality numbers. I don't normally jump into that, but there was a time where 30.8 people out of every 100,000 uh, passed away. And then uh, they, they started putting in all of these safety measures, all these hoops that we had to jump through. And, and then after a period of time, that number became uh, 12 12 deaths per every 100,000. Let's do the math. So let's say let's say it stayed at 30. Okay, so 30 divided by 100,000 times 100 to make it a percentage. Okay, so that's 0.03%. So that's not even half of 1%. So th that means if 30 fatal if, if there's 30 fatalities for every 100,000 people in the population, the whole population, that means that 99.97% of the population is fine. I mean, it's still people we're talking about, but 99.97% of the population is fine. And, and that was, that was at 30. Now we're down to 12. So that percentage is even less. And think about all the hoops that we had to go through to get from 30 in 1937 down to 12 in the modern day. I mean, you got anti-lock brakes, you've got uh, airbags, you got oh, seatbelts. Remember the whole rigmarole about wear your seatbelt? So in 1937, 99.97% uh, of the population completely unaffected by automobile fatalities. Those numbers illustrate that we spend a lot of time and effort uh, trying to reduce fatalities for, for people. We'll probably never even come in contact. I mean, most of us will not be affected by an auto accident. Uh, a lot of us won't even know anybody. Like when I was in high school, I do know of two girls that were in my high school that passed away from an auto accident. That's my only experience in 50 years of somebody that I actually know. And I didn't really even know them. I mean, it begs the question with so few people affected, is it, is it worth going through all this effort 
of course, I've, I've lost people in my life for other reasons. And if I could have prevented that, I, I would have done anything. And look, I, I guess what I'm really trying to say here is when it comes to human lives, people we know, people we don't know, it is not unusual for us as a community, as a country, as a, a globe to put in a lot of effort for things that only affect a small amount of people, to sacrifice of ourselves, to protect a small amount of people. And, and certainly, as we can see when it comes to uh, auto fatalities, uh, we put a lot of effort in just to help a small amount of people. And so from the people that benefited from those changes, the less people that died year over year from auto fatalities, there's whole families of people, there's whole generations of people whose lives uh, were spared uh, the, the worst sorrow, the worst tragedy. And so I, I feel like it makes it worth it. And just for quick reference, the fatality rate for COVID, 145 people out of every 100,000 people. What can we say? Sometimes numbers are numbers and sometimes numbers are people. Let me hit you with some more numbers. If the trend continues, about half of the people that watch this video today will be subscribed to the channel and the other half will be brand new. So uh, let me appeal to the, well, first, let me say thanks to the people that come back on a daily basis. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for watching the show. And for the folks that are new that are maybe just stumbling here for the first time, or maybe some watchers that have never committed to being a part of our community, don't fear commitment. Uh, please consider subscribing to the La Lita Loca YouTube channel with the notification bell on. Be a part of this community. Uh, that way you don't miss out when any of the new shows come out. Thank you in advance, but I'm not done there. I got more numbers. The next number I want to talk about is four, four. That's the number of cruise companies that plan to operate in Alaska. If all the major cruise companies can't go there because of the Canadian cruise ban, you got Alaska dream cruises, American cruise lines, Linbad expeditions and uncruises all American companies all companies with ships that hold a hundred passengers or less, all companies that can operate in Alaska. It's interesting. The website cruise industry news extrapolated this number out. If only those four cruise companies can do cruises in Alaska in 2021, the birth, the amount of uh, spots on a ship that will be available in the Alaska season will drop from 71,000 down to 1100. That's significant. That's why everybody is freaking out. And that's why everybody is just saying the Alaska cruise season is done. And maybe, and maybe it is, maybe the deck is stacked against Alaska. Maybe cruise companies haven't canceled yet for the nefarious reason of just trying to separate you from your cash. But back to the facts, the facts are that these cruises have not been canceled yet. And there are some advocates for Alaska, uh, primarily the, the, the folks that represent Alaska in Congress, senators, Congress people speaking out about what happened when Canada banned these cruises in Alaska. Part of the Alaska delegation, Senator Lisa Murkowski, Senator Dan Sullivan, and Congressperson Don Young, they released a joint statement. It said this, as the state with the most extensive shared border with Canada, the Alaska delegation has worked in good faith to seek compromise over border crossing restrictions due to COVID-19, keeping in mind the health and safety of Alaskans and Canadians. Canada's announcement to ban all cruise sailings over a hundred people or more traveling through Canadian waters without so much as a courtesy conversation with the Alaska delegation is not only unexpected, it is unacceptable and was certainly not a decision made with any consideration for a Alaskans or our economy. We expect more from our Canadian allies. Upon hearing the announcement, we immediately reached out to Canadian and American agencies to try and understand the rationale behind this decision, particularly the duration of the ban. We are exploring all potential avenues, including changing existing laws to ensure the cruise industry in Alaska resumes operations as soon as it is safe. We will fight to find a path forward. Boy, the delegation was stern there, right? 
right? I never thought about that. Like, if you were a sovereign government uh, bordering another country, do you feel like you have to reach out and say what you're going to do? It, it, it certainly seems like the legislators there that are representing Alaska felt like they should have got a phone call, uh, a heads up. That's a whole nother discussion. That's a whole political discussion. But the nugget in that letter that I think is important is they, they allude to the fact that there are laws that are preventing cruising from happening in Alaska. Uh, of course, the reference here is to the Passenger Vessel Services Act and the Jones Act. These are the things that are preventing cruising from Alaska happening. Cruise ships have to stop in a foreign port on their way from one U.S. location to another. So to me, that's encouraging. An acknowledgement from lawmakers connected with the region saying that uh, we recognize that these laws are in place, but to protect our economy in Alaska, we're going to see if we can get something done. Can they get something done? Possibly. I've been on a cruise that violated the Passenger Vessel Safety Act. My very first cruise was supposed to go from Mobile, Alabama to Cozumel, Mexico, back to Mobile. Alabama. That would have been perfectly fine. Instead, it went from Mobile, Alabama to Key West, Florida, back to Mobile, Alabama. And the cruise line had to get an exemption for that, or they had to pay a fine. Either way, it violated the Passenger Vessel Services Act, but it was still allowed to occur. So it does seem like a valid open discussion whether or not there can be an exemption to these rules when it comes to the Alaska season. And I think primarily because of a statement by these lawmakers representing Alaska, Alaska, and by the fact that this does happen in cruising, these exemptions do exist. I think that's why you see cruise lines not yet canceling the Alaska cruise season. Look, I don't know what else to tell you. Those are the actual facts of the moment, and I'm going to continue to be hopeful. I would encourage you to be hopeful too. The question for the comments is this, are you encouraged by the fact that the case number is below 100,000, and do you see any hope, even a sliver, for Alaska? And if you want to just put something in the comments that you're hopeful about or positive about. We can all celebrate with you if you want some company. You know, they say misery loves company. Let's flip that upside down. Happiness loves company. Uh, share something positive and we can all celebrate together. Thank you so much for watching the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony with La Lida Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.